Okay guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today, we are going to be doing a recap of round 3 of the 2019 AMA Supercross season, which took place, of course, in Anaheim too. Now, now last week, I did a recap of the Glendale race, and it did absolutely killer. You guys seemed to enjoy it, so I appreciate the love on that video. There were a lot of wild moments that took place at Glendale. Anaheim too, it wasn't as crazy, but it was the first triple crown round of the season, so that's always interesting interesting it's interesting because it's different right so we're going to talk about that talk about the 250 class and what happened in each of those main events because there were three main events for the 250 class and then of course three main events for the 450 class and uh not really a lot of action but the whole night itself was pretty interesting and pretty entertaining so uh nothing too crazy to talk about today but it should be pretty interesting guys if you do enjoy at any point in time make sure to smash that thumbs up button for me throw any comments down below let me know question of the video guys let me know down below in the comments when you think ken roxon is going to get his first win what round do you think ken roxon is gonna claim his first victory at let me know in the comments below that's the question of the video me for some reason, I feel like it's going to be late in the season, like maybe even Las Vegas, maybe Daytona. I'm not too sure. I just think he's going to have to work for it. I think it is going to happen this year. He's going to get his first win after his injury, but I think he's going to have to work for it just like we saw last night with Cooper Webb. But that's a story for later on into the video. Like I said, guys, smash the thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and let's get into it. Don't forget guys, there is the giveaway. If you want to enter the giveaway, all the information is in the little introduction, cut scene, cut screen. I don't even know what you want to call it, but all the info is in that screen for you to enter into the giveaway. So watch that, enter into the giveaway. Don't miss out guys. Go buy your merch, join the Once Company. Oh, it's this side. Join the Once Company, oppose nothing, conquer everything. And now let's get in to the recap. Okay, so we're going to start off and talk about the 250 class. I'm just going to run through like all of the main events real quick, just because like I said, it, it wasn't like Glendale. There weren't really any like huge crazy events that took place. So starting off in the 250 class, man, Adam C and Cerullo, what, what a guy, man. He could be a, a champion. He could 100% be a champion if the mistakes didn't cost him so much. He always gets good starts and then crashes or, or something just goes wrong. So 250 class moto number one. AC actually gets out there and gets the whole shot. He was followed by the points leader Colt Nichols and of course guys Adam Cienz Rulo goes down he just kind of lost the front end in the one corner after like the pit row they hit like a double into a corner and then a double out of a corner and he was kind of going now Ralph and Ralph and Ricky said he was kind of looking like he was trying to go and lean the bike over to scrub the the double out of the corner but uh, I think he just kind of lost traction coming out of the corner as he was getting on the gas lost his front end and uh, just went down so AC fell back he fell back actually pretty far into to the pack this one ahead and gave the lead over to Nichols so Colt Nichols the points leader was now out in the first race winning he was out there leading which was really really good for him in his position now going through the same section that AC crashed in uh, the double out of the corner they were calling it kind of like a wall jump uh, Colt Nichols actually caught a tough block on the landing he landed on the gas got a little squirrely clipped a tough block and we thought he was going down but the man showed he's got it he's on it this year he managed to ride away and uh, he went on to get that win now Jacob Hayes has kind of been like under the radar but he's been lurking he's been lurking and he was up near the front for a couple laps of this main event before McElrath got by him then AC got by him then Hampshire got by him and uh, he kind of he kind of got shuffled back there but other than AC going down and uh, Nichols clipping the tough block nothing really too crazy happened in this one we had Nichols who got the easy win Fernandez got an important pizza 
like an important P2. That was huge for him. He's been struggling this year. And then Makarov came in with a, a pretty huge P3 because we haven't really seen him up near the podium and up near the front yet this year. So it's cool to see him get up there and finish P3 in that first moto. And then AC fell all the way back to fourth. So he managed to finish fourth, but honestly, he probably should have won this one. Now moving on to race number two. Who gets the whole shot? No one other than the man who needs it right now, Colt Nichols. He's showing he's got what it takes, guys. Like, he's showing he can get the starts. He's showing he can win races. But what happens? He gets sketchy in the whoops and actually kind of just kind of just leans the bike over in a corner. It wasn't a crazy crash. He was up right away. He only fell back to, I think, third when he went down. And like I said, he just kind of got sketchy in the whoops and then just, just tipped over when he came into the berm. It looked like he really couldn't get his body positioning and everything ready for the corner, but he committed to the rut and it just, it got the best of him. So at the end of 250 main event number two, it was Dylan Fernandez taking the win, Makarath coming in and getting P2, showing he's probably going to be up there all night. And then Colt Nichols, of course, coming in third after going down. So at this point, it was going to be interesting. Everyone was pretty close in points, including McElrath, Ferrandez, and Colt Nichols. They were all really, really close in points and going in to the third and final main event. It was going to be interesting. Now, just real quick, guys, I don't know if I really explained the Triple Crown format. So the way it is, is all of the qualifying is done during the day. And when it gets to the night show, each class has three main events. So the 250 class does three races and the 450 class does three races. The way it works is it's Olympic scoring for the three races and you want the lowest score at the end of the night. The points are then given given out based off of the overall results. So say you go 1-1-1, one, 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 you get three points on the night, you would pretty much win win that class because no one can beat you, no one can get a lower score than three ones and uh, you would then get first overall on the night. So that's the way it works. Let's talk about 250 main event number three. Now, this main event, like I said, nothing too crazy happened. Uh, Cottrell got the whole shot and then got sketchy. He got so, so, so sketchy, leading the pack in a rhythm section, kind of over jumped, kind of got cross rutted and when he landed, man, the bike took him for a wild ride. I don't know how he didn't go down. I don't know how no one hit him. Like, it was just crazy that he didn't crash. Like, it was just wild. He got super, super sketchy and he did not crash legend man this gave ac the early lead ac was right there and like i said the guy gets killer starts adam cincerulo gets killer starts he just fades so much and he has so many mistakes we saw last weekend in glendale he dominated he showed up and he did what he needed to do here this weekend in in anaheim it was just a struggle so ac was out in the early lead makarath comes up and puts a clean pass on him ac stood no chance and had nothing for him and at the end of the main event it was makarath Adam Cianciarulo and Dylan Fernandez to round out the podium. Now, the overall result is where it's where things get interesting. So, the overall was Shane McGrath taking the win, Dylan Fernandez coming in second, and then Colt Nichols, the guy who looked like he was going to dominate all night long, coming in third place. And these guys were super, super close in the overall results. The top two, so McElrath and Fernandez both had six points. They tied on the night, but the overall went to McElrath because he had the better result later on in the night. He won the final moto, so that gives him the overall. Now, Fernandez, he finished in second, of course, tied with McElrath, but like I said, McElrath got that win. And then Nichols was right there with eight points eight points that's absolutely crazy so if ac wasn't up there in the third round it would have been even closer and uh actually ferrandez if ferrandez got ac he would have won so crazy how things played out in the 250 class but the 450 class guys oh man i don't think it's what everyone expected let's talk about it so to start things off in the 450 class there's been a lot of talk about when roxon is gonna win when is roxon gonna come out and get a win get his first win back he goes out there in the first main event and he gets the whole shot man leads the entire race he got the whole shot checked out he led the entire race until a mistake on the last lap would allow Cooper Webb 
to get by. Cooper Webb was right there hanging with him the entire time. They kind of pulled away from the rest of the field. And uh, Webb was putting the pressure on Roxon. Roxon, you know, was pretty much doing everything he could to stay in front of him. And on the last lap, Webb was just lurking. Webb seemed to really turn it on at the end of the race. And uh, Roxon made one mistake in a rhythm section. And Webb dialed it. Webb nailed the line and got past him. So it was an easy pass. Uh, I mean, bummer for Roxon, but an easy pass for Webb. Webb got the win, Roxon came in second, and then my boy Marv came in third, and he actually put a good pass on Tomac. He put a killer pass on Tomac to get that P3. So it's interesting, like Tomac, who's usually dominant at Supercross, couldn't even keep up to Webb, and then Marv got by him. I don't know, it's just interesting to see. Now, Cooper Webb went out there, he taunted Roxon after passing him on the last lap. He came over the finish line, looked back at him, gave him a little gunshot it was actually pretty sweet i don't know i don't know why i really enjoyed seeing roxon like have to work for this win i, I want to see him work for this win and seeing webb do that i don't even know why it just it, it was entertainment and i think that's why i enjoyed it so much we need more moments like that in racing where someone comes from behind and passes someone on the last lap like that makes racing racing but webb carried his momentum right on in to moto number two where he would go out and get the whole shot that puts him out into the early lead and uh, guess what guys no chad reed in moto number two i don't know why he didn't really talk about it on the broadcast he said uh it doesn't matter why his bike was broken but the thing was they got to tech two bikes so they could show up with two bikes for this race and reed didn't race the second moto because of a bike issue so if you think you know something's wrong with one bike wouldn't you just ride the other bike it was just kind of interesting that reed wasn't out there uh like i said he didn't really say much they asked him what was up with the bike on the broadcast and he just said you know it doesn't matter it's not important and then he was out there in uh moto number three and he actually got a killer start running up there near the front so i don't know what happened with reedy man he's, he's just uh I, I, I don't even know what to say. Now, Webb was out front. Roxon was up near the front before he went down in the whoops. He uh, came into the whoops and his right foot just slipped off the peg. And as soon as that happens, you lose your balance. And he went down. He didn't go down hard, but he did lose a few spots. Now, Jason Anderson, that, that crash by Roxon allowed Anderson to kind of move up a few positions. But Anderson faded really, really far back. He didn't even finish within the top five at the end of the night. So... At the end of the, the second main event, we had Cooper Webb, Marvin Muskin, Justin Barsha, who actually got hurt later on in the night, Tomac, and then Roxon for your top five. Now coming out in moto number three, who was someone that we haven't seen all night long? Eli Tomac, where has he been? at in moto number three for the 450 class tomac comes out he gets the whole shot and uh it looks like tomac is gonna check out what's gonna happen i'm not too sure right off the start anderson kind of got together with reed in one of the corners and anderson messed up the entire section after that so reed was ahead of anderson they got together in the corner reed kept going anderson just got all squirrely missed the triple jump and fell way 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 back to like 21st position on the first couple laps like anderson i don't know what was up with him in the second main event he faded really really far back it looked like he just didn't have anything for roxon and tomac when they were passing him like he just let them go by and then in main event three after seeing that it was just kind of really odd to see the the defending champion out there barely even trying barely even being like competition to these top dogs this year so i don't know what's up with anderson we saw a pretty gnarly pass by him last weekend on roxon and uh I, I don't know what's going on with our boy anderson but in heat number three he was struggling later on in the heat justin barsha went down and they would actually have the medic flags out for him uh, he was able to get off of the track, but I haven't actually heard any injury updates on him, so I don't know if he's hurt or what. Uh, we'll have to figure that one out by the next round, figure out what's up with Justin Barsha. Hopefully he's okay. The man has finally found his flow, it seems like. He's finally been up near the front consistently, and then, of course, injuries, right? Like, that just has to happen. But the results for main event number three were Tomac, the boy Marvin Muskin, and then Cooper Webb finishing on the podium so webb had a pretty killer night he was able to go out and get that overall his first 450 overall 
for Supercross. That's absolutely crazy. The boy Marvin Muskin finally having a good result this season. I mean, both of the KTM boys absolutely killing it, being one and two for the overall. And then Tomac coming in P three for that overall so it was a pretty crazy night but at the same time like pretty relaxed like i think all in all the triple crown format was pretty interesting but there were no like little events that stood out at me like last weekend like last weekend we had mookie getting injured we had anderson and roxon getting together that kind of controversial pass and then we had some drama between barsha and wilson so there were, were kind of like a few events to talk about last weekend this weekend nothing too crazy happened just just racing it was just racing this weekend so i hope you guys did enjoy leave your thoughts on both races down below in the comments guys you're both classes let me know do you guys think each person deserved the win do you think webb deserved the win or what let me know down in the comments below i think it's crazy to see webb finally getting that win uh, i really do want to see rocks get a win but i think he's gonna have to work for it and i think it's gonna turn out to be an interesting season so i hope you guys did enjoy if you did smash that thumbs up and i'll catch you in another video peace